one that's been to Ghana yeah. can tell you that the, 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 the hotels and restaurants are not particularly uh, under-occupied. Okay. Um, and similarly, the, the financial intermediation, they're looking for 17%. These are real uh, increases year on year. Mm. And uh, they reckon that they got 1%. And again, I, I don't think that the, the financial service sector right. has, has particularly been you know, ill-affected. So mm. there seems to be some strangeness in those numbers. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we get another revision right. of those. Um, we had a big revision, I don't know if you remember this, we, when uh, the, the, the Q2 uh, numbers came out, they were right. suggesting growth of uh, 33% and they revised those down to 16%. So, um, I, actually, I think that was Q1, excuse me. Okay, so there are some anomalies yeah. there, but you are bullish about Ghana, Stephen Bailey-Smith, Head of Research at Standard Bank, just talking to us there about the budget for 2012 unveiled a short while ago. The Nigeria-South Africa Chamber of Commerce is currently hosting a trade mission from South Africa to Nigeria. It's a 10-man delegation from the Western Cape province of South Africa. It's accompanied by the province's investment and trade promotion agency known as Westgro. Joining us now from Lagos is Michael Gamwo, Manager for International Trade at West Grow. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Michael. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, your viewers, viewers. Thanks so much. Okay, so you are in Nigeria trying to build relations between the Western Cape and Nigeria, South Africa and Nigeria. Tell us why it's important for you as a provincial investment group to get out there to Nigeria. Um, I think it's very important that we use uh, platforms like trade missions to get businesses to, uh, to network and interact with a view of forming partnership and joint ventures. So that's the reason why we arrange this kind of business delegation that we do every year uh, into Nigeria so that South African and mostly Western Cape companies can come into contact, you know, physical mm. contact with their potential partners. Um, in Nigeria. Okay, what sort of reception have you had? And I'll qualify what I'm saying here. Western Cape renowned for a variety of things, uh, but more importantly, wine and furniture on the consumer goods side. Are those the sorts of things you're marketing out there? Yes, definitely. In, in the group, you will notice that we have a couple of furniture companies, but we also have, uh, and then uh, agricultural companies, uh, you know, Western Cape is very big in terms of um, uh, fresh fruits like apples and pears, but also agribusiness products like uh, wine and, uh, and juice. And uh, so those are the component of, uh, in terms of sectors of the companies mm -hmm. that are represented here in Nigeria. Okay, there's also been an influx of business travelers. Certainly every time I'm in Nigeria, I see a new hotel. And I think this is where there can really be synergy because the Western Cape is world renowned for the kinds of tourism and leisure facilities that you have. They are globally celebrated. Are you lending your expertise on the tourism side, on the architecture and construction side? Yes, definitely. Um, Nigeria is a bit similar to Western Cape in, in the sense that there's a lot of hotels being built from what I've observed in Nigeria. But the difference is that um, those hotels in Nigeria cater more for the business travelers, whereas in, 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 uh, in the Western Cape, uh, it's more tourism uh, uh, visitors. So that's a bit of difference that you have. But otherwise, uh, there's a lot of synergy uh, that can be built. And as you, you will notice that there's a lot of uh, the players in the hotel industry, there are a couple of South Africans, like Protea Hotels, mm -hmm. that have been uh, um, present in, in Nigeria. And I think that helped to raise, to raise the standard of hotel and tourism uh, industry in, right. uh, in Nigeria. We're also told that the West Grove Trade Mission is also looking to see where you can participate on the ICT side. It's a major contributor to GDP in Nigeria. Connectivity is high. There's so much going on in the uh, telecom space. Is there an aggressive drive for this? Because the Western Cape has also got a lot of venture capital activities in technology and innovation. Well, yes, in the ICT in general, Western Cape is one of the big players on the continent. Uh, when you look at uh, software development, you will notice that uh, Western Cape is very big. And um, you get a lot of these uh, companies uh, in the ICT that are very active in Nigeria. It's just that uh, those kind of figures are very difficult to capture in statistics. But there's a lot of South African Western Cape companies that are involved in business in Nigeria. You mm -hmm. see uh, South African Airways, for instance, has 
uh, a flight every uh, every day into yeah. uh, into Lagos, and it's the big uh, uh, carriers. So those are business people that are coming here to uh, provide this kind of service in the ICT sectors. You know, the Nigerian uh, ICT industry is very big with the you know telephone companies, and all these go with you know, the accessory, the services that are related to this com right. uh, telecommunication business. Okay, now Nigeria is a big country with a big market. It's a federal system, 36 states. So some would argue when you want to do business in Nigeria, you've got to chip away at it in small blocks. You've got to identify where the centers of growth and opportunity lie. How are you approaching it? Are you going state for state or are you focusing on the federal government and hoping that your investments will trickle down? Yes, uh, um, I think the, the main hub the business hub of Nigeria is in Lagos. So when we take this kind of mission, uh, the plan is to get involved with people, business people and, uh, and government uh, officials that are based in, in Lagos. And the, what we normally advise companies who are looking to penetrate the Nigerian market is to identify the you know, uh, uh, partners that have links in not just in Lagos, but also in other uh, uh, states. In that way, a company doesn't have to um, to go in the whole of, of the country. As long as you have a very good partner, a reputable joint venture uh, partner, you can let that work be done by your partner in Nigeria. So that's the kind of strategy. Nigeria is very big, so you cannot afford to, uh, to be all over the country. But what you can do, and that's what we advise companies, is to identify relevant partners that have those linkages, those networks, mm -hmm. not just in Lagos, but in other parts of, of, uh, of Nigeria. All right, we wish you well and success in your trade mission. Michael Gamo, he's an international trade manager for Westgrow, which is the trade and investment division of the Western Cape Provincial Government. It's time for us to take a look at how markets have fared across the African continent. Uh, one point down for the JSC All Share Index. So sideways trading and relatively good showing at 32,672. The All Africa 40, which includes South Africa's JSC, a positive traction there, 66.3 points. Looking at the Kenya's uh, NSC 20, which ended the session down 18 points. Uh, I mean, uh, big driver today was the um, disappointing results coming out of Total Kenya. Profits down 67%. But in general, in the last month, we're seeing a lot more foreign investors coming in and giving the market a little bit of the resistance that it needs. Also, the Kenyan shilling trading at 93 shillings today has added to confidence for the market. But it's down 18 points at 3,355. After the break, taking a look at uh, Kenya's strategic presence in the war against terror in Somalia.